You know, over the past two years, we've heard a lot about following the science, listen to the experts, and trust the, the reliable sources, haven't we? Well, I just figured, with seeing how the Epoch Times decided to craft this very nice infograph that they have here of all the approved and non-FDA-approved COVID-19 treatments, everybody knows that vaccines are safe and effective, right? And masks, oh my god, you just can't get enough on your face. You should probably know which which treatments are out there how much they cost which ones are approved which ones aren't and question what what the science of the day will allow you to know and hey fucking i'm getting so tired of just trying to be i don't know anything approaching following these fucking nebulous guidelines which we'll never get a fucking clear shake on uh, yesterday there was a this stupid fucking survey that went around and i'm sure he's gonna work wonders when i put i disagree with basically everything that youtube's doing so hey guess what we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of things that uh, might land me in trouble but hey you guys are watching this right now so i'm fine with that so what's exactly authorized what can your doctor give you without any questions because it's the science and it works how about remdesivir here cost per unit uh $3,300 it was one of the earliest uh, pharmaceuticals approved for uh, help and assistance with the COOF okay pharmaceutical company uh, Gilead Science was informed by the FDA on April 16th 2020 that was just just barely outside of 15 days to flatten the curve but you guys remember that that's fine uh that's uh oh that it's antiviral drug remdesivir would receive an emergency use authorization for treating COVID-19 on hospitalized patients. The drug was in the process of several clinical trials at the time. On October 22, 2020, remdesivir became the only drug to receive full FDA approval on COVID-19 treatment. It's then since been joined by many other wonderful, safe, and effective uh, treatments as well. For the approval, the FDA mainly relied on one trial sponsored by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, which is headed by by the de facto leader of the federal COVID response, Dr. Anthony Fauci. And we all know we can trust him because he is in fact the science and we all follow the science, right? What about convalescent plasma? Oh, it simply cost, depending on which one you're using and where you're at, anywhere between $5,000 and $10,000. And just slightly after it received Emerg uh, remdesivir received emergency use authorization um, in August, uh, uh, Convalescent Plasma received also uh, the emergency use authorization on December 28, 2021. The FDA revised the EUA again, allowing for the treatment only for patients with immunosuppressive disease or receiving immunosuppressive treatment. The authorization is no longer limited to hospitalized patients. So if you think that you're sick and you ended up getting a test and it came back being like, you're good to go. Well, guess what? You can get the convalescent plasma treatment for a, a measly five to ten grand. Uh, what about baricintinib? Whatever. $4,800 per dose. And it was authorized, oh boy, in November 19th of 2020. Wow. That's a steal in comparison. What about monoclonal antibody therapy? Well, if you can get it, if you can manage to get it, um, a thousand to two thousand dollars per dosage, but you know what? Hey, they're so they're so hard to come by that the federal government is still rationing them out. Anyways, uh, another one that I can't uh, pronounce. Um, but I trust Big Pharma, obviously, just full throated support of all of them because there's nothing more than I trust than this. Just those bureaucrats, which a couple of years ago who uh, were enemy number one, but they're trying to save lives now. All of a sudden, you can get uh, Takla Cosm whatever uh, for thirty. $3,200 a dose and that one's at least you know what hey that's some of that newer science that we hear about uh, all the time from June 24th of 2021 not even a full year hell get her while it's hot not all of them are expensive and I'm sure that this one's probably just as easily readily available and it just 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 got authorization a shade over two months ago at this point december 8th 2021 wow what a big old gap in time between authorized dose and uh, authorized uh, treatments ain't ain't that weird 
It's almost like there was something in the middle there preoccupying a lot of people's time. Uh, cost at about $10 per. As the FDA gave EUA uh, for Evushield, a non-approved monoclonal antibody treatment consisting of more words uh co-packaged with other words or words on december 8th 2021 it costs about ten dollars per infusion according to drugs.com that sounds fun uh but the fda only uh allows for its use as a prophylactic for immunocompromised patients of those allergic to covid19 vaccines so if you're the likes of um, aaron Rodgers, you can say that you've gone through treatment but then get lambasted by the media because it's safe and effective uh, and then you got uh, Paxlovid for 530 and then you got Monoponol on long, long, whatever for 700 bucks per. All of those are great and effective ways to treat it. But hey, guess what? There are certain things that are not authorized and you shouldn't take. And your doctor should never listen to the experts and take any of this stuff as well. Because you got the, you got the goddamn horse paste that comes in pill form. Uh, ivermectin costs anywhere between 100 to a thousand dollars that must be a big tube of paste hydroxychloroquine seven dollars per remember not authorized at all whatsoever uh fluvoxamine whatever that is basic compounds like zinc vitamin d3 not authorized for treatment but if you'd like a little bit more information on zinc and vitamin d3 i have a couple of relatively popular videos on my secondary channel link in the description of course when it comes to zinc uh vitamin d3 uh vitamin k2 if you'd like to learn more about that stuff that's what i do over on my other channel i like doing it and it's uh not quite as inflammatory over there it's just mostly me just free balling on a topic but if you're if you'd like that stuff otherwise we got to talk about one of these non unauthorized drugs that's out there and with the science which i've been informed is now changing what is going to be authorized and what is not going to be authorized i you, uh, the mind wanders and inquiring minds have to know well we got proposed legislation but what do they know are they the actual experts are they trusting the science on this one proposed legislation would allow ivermectin use for critically sick patients according to iowa lawmakers well they're just a crazy corn huskers and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about oh but then you got other meth riddled hillbillies in oklahoma saying that doctors can prescribe ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine only in uh, only in oklahoma or oklahoma sorry according to their attorney general what does he know he's a lawyer he's not a doctor okay he's not trusting the science oklahoma's attorney general has told doctors across the state that they can oh no but it's not authorized though and it won't be effective and you're just putting people at danger what are the side effects exactly anyways uh prescribe iver ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine for the purpose of treating the coof and will not face disciplinary procedures for doing so interesting in a statement published tuesday uh, this week attorney general john o'connor said that he has found no legal basis for a state medical licensure board to discipline a licensed physician for exercising sound ju judgment and safely prescribing the drugs yeah it's almost like you know that generic boilerplate disclaimer of people and it's like go talk to your doctor if you want any medical advice you know sound advice hey you want something you want advice on something specific go talk to somebody who would know you and uh, know your situation and be able to give you specific tailored advice it's almost like going to those people they might have your best intentions in mind instead of just bureaucrats at the cdc or the fda they might know a little bit more than you not not those people you who you've never met and they don't care about you they just prefer that there be fewer people in the world so for whatever fucking nefarious reasons they want but again okay you so you got iowa they're just like what the fuck do they know okay they're just a little face on the chef in the middle of the country fuck off and, and then especially oklahoma don't make me laugh aren't you guys just out there when you're not just fucking eating tubes of horse paste aren't you guys out there just fucking your cousins like why can't you be more like maine and a maine doctor under ordered to undergo psych evaluation for prescribing ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine yeah exactly just get the jab it's safe and effective fuck come on Dr. Merrill Nass was hailed a hero by veterans for helping them expose the connection between the military's mandatory anthrax vaccine and a serious illness that they were experiencing. Hmm. 
An anthrax vaccine. Now, a vaccine for something that'll kill you toot sweet, that seems pretty important. A 70-year-old Maine internist uh, has given congressional testimony in four states on vaccine efficacies, deciphered scientific studies for courts, and served as an international national consultant. An international national consultant? Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> it just hung me up there for a second. A uh, consultant on biological warfare and pandemics for more than the last... Uh, or for more than three decades. Yeah, but uh, maybe all their testimony is uh, compromised because they're crazy. Last month, the main board of licensure uh, in medicine suspended NASA's license uh, because they're getting too old, because they're over the age of um, retirement, but yet still too young to run as a presidential candidate on a Democratic ticket. Um, and set a string of conditions for her to meet in order for her to get her license back, including undergoing a psycho psychiatric evaluation, releasing a list of every patient she has seen in the last six months, uh, just every patient, patient that she's seen in the last six months, regardless of why uh, she consulted with them. Okay, that doesn't seem like a breach of doctor-patient confidentiality, but then again, this is uh, the licensure board, that it's probably staffed with doctors who haven't seen anybody okay haven't treated anybody in way longer than six months but they know better than you even after asking her how she advertises her practices uh nas who has been in practice for 41 years clearly a quack she doesn't know what she's talking about she probably still thinks that the best way to cure a disease is to get all that infected blood out with leeches called her suspension a tyrannical witch hunt yeah no she it's not like she hasn't helped anybody it's not like she's been an expert in courtrooms or anything like that she's just, she's clearly out of her tree on this one wait a minute she's 70 years old are we sure th okay maybe the fact that they suspended her license is because she's found the fountain of youth the whole purpose of suspending my license is to scare doctors around the country not to go against the government government's narrative uh, that the COVID vaccine and mandates are good. No, they are good. Shut up. Come on. What do you know, doctor? <laughs> Members of the state licensure board, oh, license board, sorry, did not return numerous phone calls from the Epoch Times uh, to comment about NASA's case. Uh, they're probably, they all got their booster shots at the same time. They just couldn't return their phone calls. I'm sure they'll get around to it. Nash joins doctors and physicians assistants in at least 10 states, including Kansas, Florida, Hawaii, Washington, Texas, Arkansas, who have had their license suspended or found themselves under investigation for their state's medical license board. I wonder why. According to the state's complaint, the mayor or the main board harshly scrutinized or harsh scrutiny of NAS stems specifically from three legal prescriptions she wrote for ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine for the prevention and treatment of the COOF. The patients didn't complain about the prescriptions, so what are we on about? All recovered from the virus. Hey, congratulations! One complaint came from a Twitter user. Oh, okay, cool. Once again, um, public opinion polls and Twitter. This is where politicians, bureaucrats, uh, whatever, okay? This is where they take their advice. This is where they take their poli- uh, This is where they form their policy decisions. Do you think politics is getting any better because of it? Just to let you know. From another hospital doctor. Oh my god, they said they were a doctor on Twitter. Ergo, every- Like Aristotle once said, everything on the internet is true. And a third from a midwife associated with the same hospital. Oh, a midwife. Well, what's the what's the licensure to become a midwife? I'm sure it's just as excruciating and just as extensive of that of being a PhD recipient. Uh, complained about NASA's prescription of hydroxychloroquine to a pregnant woman who survived the... The infection? What a monster. Board also accused NASA of spreading misinformation. I've never heard of her before. About the pandemic in the ways of her personal blog, writing that she opposed a danger to the public by expressing her free speech. She's being censured by uh, government actors. All right. Nas certainly does not hold back on her blog. She announced she would be live streaming the CDC's uh, February 4th uh, Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices hearings. Okay. She wrote the same cast of characters who lie, cheat, and steal. Oh, I'm sorry. She's not Eddie Guerrero fan. Uh, befuddled us with the poorest quality federal science ever invented based at, out of her fucking tree which you can see in the background we can continue to go on on this but all you guys need to know is that vaccines are safe and effective and the best way for us to get out of this pandemic 
until the science changes again and then it tells us whatever it needs to in order for us to use the pandemic as a political tool that it's been propped up as for no longer than those 15 days so they could have got away with it in the first time relatively unscathed if they would have just used it as a political tool for the for the first election in 2020 they might have been able to skate on that one if they would have started repealing all of the restrictions the first time around but they got a little greedy and they extended it out way too fucking far but i trust the science and i really hope you guys do too but let's tap tackle another aspect okay because we got oh we got all of the safe and effective methods and all of the authorized stuff and hey we trust the science over here now don't we anyways i don't think winking makes that much of a noise but anyways no 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 we know all of that stuff okay but what about the other most safe and effective way to control this spread and control the pandemic lockdowns and one of those fringe institutions released a, a meta-analysis of how effective lockdowns are. What, what's their name? Oh, oh, Johns Hopkins, right? They had a study out there, that fringe outlet. And it's enlightening. And we're going to take a look at both sides of that argument here with the next video. So hopefully, if you're interested in that and you guys, you know what, hey, you guys are all triple boosted and you're all sitting at home behind your computer screens wearing three or four masks, you'll be able to join me for the next one. With that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo i want you to follow your gut and get after it and make sure you go out there and you book your booster shot and have a great day or whatever fuck off